2018? Say yes. I'm so glad because it's going to be a remarkable, remarkable year. God is getting ready to do such things as you cannot imagine. And I am so excited about this word. You know, sometimes as a prophet, you almost don't want to give the word for the next year because it's not really a good word. It's like you're going, oh, yeah, I don't think I want to give that at all. But, you you know, we, we, we're, we're exhorters, and so we give, you know, the encouraging word, the thing that you know, that will help you make it through that terrible year. 2017 was a difficult year, huh? Anybody? Was it a difficult year? I mean, I've had more people tell me I am not sorry to close the door on that year. I mean, think about what's happened in America, you know, the floods, the fires, the shaking, the the division of the nation in many ways, people on all kinds of sides, even though we are the United States. And regardless what side you're on or how you feel, it's been a difficult, difficult time. And we need to commiserate with each other. We need to love each other. But this coming year is a different kind of year. And so, but before I give that, I have a word for Trinity. I have a word for the whole world and an exhortation to give you. And I'm and always, when I'm in this season, I just go, oh, help me, Jesus. How am I going to get that all in there? But we know he'll help me. But first, I have a prophetic word. Mo, are you here? Come here. <laughs> I don't think I've ever given you a word, have I? Maybe you have been to his restaurant. It's great, serves great food. Let me give you a little plug for that. Midlothian, right? It's Midlothian. But the Lord would say to you, Mo, you are coming into a season of blessing and increase. It's been a hard time. It's been a hard season. But you have overcome, and you have determined that you're going to stay with the Lord, even though there have been challenges. I don't know what's happened to you personally, but I see all kinds of challenges you've had at home, in the business. But the Lord says, I am your future, and I have given you this ability of hospitality. I have given you this ability to love people. And the Lord said, I did not give you that ability to go down. I gave you that ability to go up. And the Lord says, I'm going to show you a way to prosper on such a level that you will be just amazed because you also have a gift of giving. And you want to be able to give in greater ways than you have had the ability to do. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you new ideas. I'm going to give you new outlets. I'm going to show you what you could do. And the Lord says, there's going to be a cutting away of some things so I could add some other things. Trust me in this season of that because the Lord says, I'm going to move you to a different place. And I don't mean like, you know, away from this area, but I'm just, there's some moves you're going to make. There's some things you're going to do that will seem like leaps of faith. But the Lord says, you will see in the end that it's a greater blessing than you could imagine. I'm going to show you how to do all this. I'm going to show you my great love. And the Lord says, I have pulled you out personally to tell you, I have seen your sacrifice. I have seen the things you have done that has cost you. The things you have done in secret, I'm going to reward in open, says the Lord. Amen. Oh, he's so sweet. You know, you feel, you know, when you prophesy, prophesy to that deep place, that thing somebody really wants to hear about, you know, and, and that, that they're asking God about the wilderness. Everybody has something in their heart that they say, oh, if Jesus would only talk to me about that, you know, that thing. And Miriam, uh, it was very interesting. She prophesied. Didn't she do a good job prophesying? <laughs> Come up here. I have a word for you. <laughs> Come up here. And it's very interesting. I went and gave her a big hug because I've always, she's always felt this size uh, seven and a half narrow foot behind her. Come on, you can do it, Mary. I'm pushing her out there, right? Well, I went up and hugged you, and what'd you, what'd you say? 
Well, I had a dream. Cindy was actually in my dream last night. And she just, um, she really encouraged me. And she said, be strong in the Lord and do exactly as he says. And it was super fast and short, but I just, I just felt encouraged, the courage of the Lord. So, yeah, thank you. We appreciate you. <laughs> well, the Lord says that you are moving into a new area of the prophetic and you are moving up, says the Lord, and you're going to take many with you. You and Tommy, Tommy, come up here too. Come on, they're, they're over our school of the supernatural with some others. <clears throat> the Lord says this is a year of moving up for you too. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to write. And this writing is going to accelerate things because there are deep truths I'm showing you. And, you. and the Lord says, don't compare yourself to Bill Johnson. You're not Bill Johnson. You're you. But the Lord says, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to bring forth the supernatural in ways greater than you can imagine, greater than you can dream. The Lord says, you have started. It's been at times a bit challenging, but the Lord says, I'm getting ready to lose power evangelism. That's the word I get, power evangelism. And where are my ushers? I'm up here all by myself. And what is this about? Okay. And so, and so the, I need to. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the Lord says, get ready, get ready, get ready for an explosion of power. It's coming on a level you cannot imagine. Your students are going to explode with my power. This church is going to explode with my power. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to raise up a generation, the youth, the children, the singles. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to explode with my power and my anointing, says the Lord, and it's going to go out of these walls, and it's going to go into the streets, it's going to go into the malls, it's going to go into Redbird Mall, it's going to go into these cities, it's going to go into the schools. The Lord says power evangelism. The Lord says you're not stuck, you haven't done anything wrong, I'm just getting ready for that moment, and that moment is going to come just like it fell in the Brownsville revival, that moment is going to come, says the Lord. Woo! Come on. Amen. Come on. Who wants some of that power of evangelism? Just stand up to your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for a new anointing. The Lord says, don't look around and see who it's going to be because it's going to be you, says the Lord. The Lord says, I'm taking everything up to a new level, a new level of miracles. And the Lord says, yes, there are many challenges around you, but don't look at the challenges. Look at my word, says God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for a new level of power evangelism. You're going to see people healed at your workplace. You're going to see people healed when you shop. You're going to see people healed. And the Lord says, because you bless the prophets on a worldwide scale, Trinity Church, I'm going to bless the people of Trinity. Those online who are watching, you're going to take it, take it too. And so right now, just take it. Just now receive it. Come on, say, I receive it. I receive it. What do you do? You use it. Come on. Come on, wave those hands in the air. Wave them in the air. These hands are going to heal the sick. In Jesus' name, amen. Hug somebody and sit down. I didn't see you hugging anybody. Come on, mama's in the house and I do watch. I don't know if you're quite ready. I just sit there a moment. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just when the Lord's put you under the power of God, you're, the power of God is on you for a reason. So you just need to let it stay on you till God finishes, okay? You know, so that's very, oh, I have another word. Oh, dear, I was going to preach, but no, I have another word for you. <laughs> And the Lord says, daughter, I've also opened that prophetic well within you. 
and God says, I'm getting ready to open it in a deep, deep way. The Lord says, I've been giving you dreams. I've been giving you visions, right? I've been showing you things. And the Lord says, now the outlet is coming for that because everything's going up. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. You can clap your hands. Amen. Woo! That's so good. You know, there's such a presence of God in the house, and those watching online, make sure that you just receive it and you take it as well. Well, let me give the word for Trinity, and then I'll, I'll move along, and we'll share some of the national things. This is the word of the Lord. And, you know, let me tell you about prophecy. If you feel it, even if you're a visitor or whatever, you know, you can just say, I like it, it's mine, okay? You know, if it resonates in your heart, there's something called reson something that resonates. We used to call it, do I have a witness or something like that. But meaning that inside the Holy Spirit is saying, that's for you too. So, you know, you can just take it and say, I want to go up to a new level. I want to prophesy. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, that we should, that we should uh, pursue love, but earnestly desire to prophesy. So it's a very important gift. The Holy Spirit is in you, and he wants to come out of you. Doesn't mean you're a prophet, but he can speak anytime he wants. So you just need to learn to get out of the way and let him do that. Amen? So this is a year of multiplication and harvest. You understanding that? Multiplication and harvest. And it says, these strategies will be given for prophetic evangelism and outreach, new open doors of influence and visibility to both South and East Dallas. The Lord really showed me that East Dallas is going to be a great expansion. And it's very interesting. I would not, even though I didn't think about it earlier this morning and yesterday I was working this message, I, you know, just like the Lord has opened a door, I prophesied we would have churches that would align with us either last year or the year before. I can't remember which year it was, but that's happening now. I would not be surprised if there wasn't a church in East Dallas that wants us to come alongside with them. In fact, the Lord showed me that God is going to uh, use this church uh, in a great, great way to open. There's a lot of churches that are about ready to fold in some troubled areas, but the Lord says that he's going to bring us in and we're going to bring peace, we're going to bring reconciliation, and we're going to go into many of these areas that are formerly troubled. But there's going to be a huge financial boom that affects Oak Cliff, East Dallas, and Duncanville. Anybody live in any of those areas? Duncanville? Oh, Cliff, anybody? You know, not that it won't affect the surrounding areas, but this is a time for open doors to buy real estate and for house miracles. How many people want a house miracle? Stand up real quick. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, for all these that are believing to buy a house, all of these that are believing for a miracle to go up a new level. Some of you may own a house, but you're saying, I want to go up a new level. And so, Father, I pray a blessing. Just receive it. Come on. I pray a, a, a strategy for God to show you. And some of you are in a financial situation in your current house that you would say to the Lord, I never could do that. Take the nevers out of the, your dictionary, okay? Okay. Because God says, impossible is not a word that I understand. Are you getting it? So, Father, I thank you for faith to move up to a new level. I thank you for faith to buy. The Lord shows me there's some people here that you've gotten in a big credit mess, but God is going to do a credit wash. Are you understanding this? He's going to do a credit wash, and he's going to help you buy a house. Amen? So you write this down. You go home and you pray over it, okay? This is a year. We'll talk about year for open doors. So how many receive it? Come on. Okay. Let's give a shout. Amen? Okay. Be seated. Amen. Please help the people down from the platform. Okay. <laughs> They're walking slow. I have been on their end of it, so I understand. Okay, so house miracles. 
I could tell you so many stories about house miracles, uh, but I, you know, I won't get into that today. But I'm telling you something. You're going to see that God is going to do great, great miracles for you. Some of you are really stupid in the past with your finances. Can I say that? Don't look at me in that tone of voice. You know you were. And so, but God is going to help you get out of that mess because we are in a poverty-free zone here, aren't we? Amen? Amen? And so not only are we going to be poverty-free, but our region, South Dallas. Listen, you, did you know that South Dallas was once supposed to be like the Highland Park did you, in Oak Cliff? Did you know that? It was a very wealthy park. Well, I want to tell you, we're going to redig some wells. And God is going to bring blessing. And people are going to say, don't move north, move south. Come on, don't look at me in that tone of voice. Come on, let's believe it. Amen? 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 We're not the poor cousin here in this city. All right. So the Lord said to me that many will come to know the Lord, and God's going to begin to touch businesses. I see Red Bird Mall touched by God's power. The prayers of his church are affecting the atmosphere over the region. Whenever you begin to pray, expect real estate prices to go up. You know, I remember when a friend of mine was, uh, uh, we sent prayer teams to pray in Union Station in, in uh, Washington, D.C. And, you know, we have a 50, you may not know, generals.org. You know, we, we're the generals, and we have, a, we have a 50 state prayer network. Anyway, so we'll send people on assignments. We're going to deal with Chicago this year. But anyway, we sent people uh, in, in there, and the intercessor was standing in Union Station, and the birds were flying in and out of the windows, and it was just a mess. And we always say, buy in an area before we send in the intercessors because it's going to go up and up and up and up. It's going to be blessed, and you will see that happen. So that's why it's time to believe this year because things are going to start going up in huge ways. Acceleration of missions greater than ever before. The church will be known for its astounding feats, and that was the word the Lord used, feats of compassion, both in America and in the nations of the world. Oh, and that includes Afghanistan. I don't know who's watching from Afghanistan, but I want to say to you, God is getting ready to bless you in that country in a way greater than you can, you just almost cannot imagine the favor that's coming on you. Trinity is an oasis and a shelter from the storms of life. It will more and more be known as this oasis in a place of spiritual and physical refreshing. It will include physical refreshing, physical fitness, as well as spiritual fitness, and I was so convicted. I don't know if I was convicted enough to get a trainer, but I was sort of convicted. Yeah, when I heard that, okay. <laughs> miracles, miracles, miracles. That goes along with the word for Tommy and Miriam. A powerful wave of miracles will be released. Becky, the reconciled women's movement will go national very quickly. Amen. Come up here, all you reconciled women, everybody involved in that movement with Becky. Come on. And hurry up. You're on my time right now. Okay, you can't be slow. You snooze, you lose. Okay. <laughs> Trinity will be known across the nation, even the news as a place of healing and restoration. So the Lord says, get ready. The women of color are coming to a new visibility, says the Lord. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to break down the barriers. And the Lord says, but the women of different ethnicities have not come to a place that they need to outside of certain circles. But God says, what happens here is going to make national news. What happens here is going to break down racism. I'm giving you the anointing, not only from this house, for... Where, do, where are my catchers? What is the problem? <laughs> You're making it hard on me up here. I'm just saying I love you, but okay. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, more, 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 more. Yeah, Father, the anointing. Now the anointing. The anointing. The anointing. Father, we thank you for this anointing. I impart that anointing, that anointing, 
yeah, that reconciling anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord says, daughter, you've had such a heart for this. And, but you have said to me, Lord, I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> and the Lord says, I know how to do this. You just get started. And I'm going to bring you women because this is your year of a mother. You're going to become a mother of a movement. And that heart of the mother that God has put inside you is going to expand. And you're going to have many, many daughters, many, many daughters that go forth from this house, says the Lord. Amen. Oh, you guys are too quiet. Come on. Woo! Now, this is for Pastor Jim. You can come up or you can say you want to come up here. This is a good word. I think, Sheila, you should come up here too because this is about money. <laughs> She's the money one. <laughs> the building fund will be raised supernaturally. <laughs> and, and listen to me. That anointing that you have for finances is getting ready to go up to such a degree. I feel it on you. And the Lord says, it can be caught from you, says the Lord. The Lord says, you have had faith for so many things, but now I'm going to bless not only the church, but you. I'm going to bless you and Jim. And you're going to be able to give twice what you have given. Your net worth is getting ready to increase on such a level that you cannot imagine what is getting ready to happen. As you have sown here, I'm getting ready to sow back to you. The Lord says, I, you know, I know you have a beautiful house, but I feel like you're going to be repositioned. And the Lord says, I'm going to reposition you. And the Lord says, it's going to be a delight to you. It's going to be perfect. It's exactly what you're going to need in this season. Let me see your hands. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, and the Lord says to you, a father of a nation. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to so increase the number of churches that relate. And the Lord says, I'm going to increase the finances of this church at a commiserate level to what needs to be done. And the Lord says, the new equipment will come with ease. Everything will come with ease. I'm going to give you the best, only by the best, says the Lord. Only by the best that you won't have to replace. And the Lord says, I'm going to use you to speak into the assemblies of God. And the Lord says, I'm going to loose the prophetic anointing into the assemblies of God. And the Lord says, there's a redigging of the wells of the assemblies from when it was a movement, not just an denomination. And the Lord says, the prophetic is the key. The Lord says, your anointing of miracles is getting ready to go up to a level that will be so surprising. Even what you saw with Steve Hill in Argentina, some of the things that happened when you were with him, the Lord says, you don't know what you got, but you got that anointing. You're going to start moving on a greater level. Everything's going to be greater. Everything going to be new. Everything's going to be refreshing. Let me see your hand. So, Father, I thank you for loosing that in the name of Jesus, the new, the new, the new, the prophetic word, the word of knowledge, the healing. Father, the, the glory of God that will be manifest, the faith of God for miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yay, amen. Oh, Trinity School. Trinity Christian School is going to receive funds to refurbish its buildings. Now, this is for the kids, okay? Both the football field and the new diamond field will receive upgrades as well. The Lord shows me that particularly the elementary school and even here, I see a new building project. The Lord shows me I'm getting ready to build totally new buildings 
for the school, says the Lord. And the Lord says, because it's going up, it's not going down. In the age when Christian schools many times go under, it's not going to go under, it's going to go over, says the Lord. And I'm going to build new buildings. It, I, I see new computers. I see new uh, just do everything. I want to tell you, it's going to be new, 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 new. Amen? How many have a kid in Trinity Christian School? Amen. My grandkids are there waving at me. Amen. Amen. So, oh, this is a great one. This is a great one. Oh, I love this. The Lord showed me that there is going to be a children's revival that will become a children's movement. Worship songs will be written by the children, and a special emphasis on worship will take place that will bless the whole church. So what does that mean? Dreams and visions for five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. God is going to begin to show your children things, the high school students. The prophetic is going to flow. It's going to be a supernatural school. It's not going to be, it's not going to be business as usual. The training, the education is going to go to new levels. But the Lord says not only will the education go to new levels, but the Lord says the supernatural element will be put into the schools, and that's going to go to new levels as well. And the Lord says, it's time to emphasize the children, the children, the children, the children. The Lord says, that's why I want these buildings to be finished. The building fund, the things need to happen because it's about legacy, legacy, legacy. It's about your legacy. It's about what is so different about this church because it's a racist, free church. That's what's so different about what we do here. And that's what's so different about that school. Those kids are friends, red, yellow, brown, black, and white. You understand? We're doing something different here. Come on, somebody shout. We're reconciled. We're different. Woo! Hallelujah. The Bible says, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. Psalm 8, 2. God is getting ready to lose the children and the youth to silence the avengers. The Lord says, I'm going to from, from the three-year-olds and the, even the babes, the Lord says, get ready upon your children and your grandchildren, your nieces and your nephews. Listen to those watching on the web. And the Lord says, the multiplication of churches, multiply, multiply, multiply. The annexes of Trinity Church, we're going to see that God is going to move and what's on the mother of the mother church is going to fall upon all the other churches and it's going to be used in America and the nations. There's going to be one in Rwanda. There's going to be one in South Africa. There's going to be them all across Latin America. The Latino Connect is going to start beginning to minister and there's going to be Latino churches that are birthed out of that that are Trinity churches and the Lord says, I'm doing a new thing. I'm going to do something new with this church and it's going to be so supernatural so you get ready you get aligned and you get ready with what God wants to do with you amen come on let's give a shout Woo! wow what a word what a word okay the year five this is a year 2018 in the Hebrew calendar how many of you know that the Bible is a book of Hebraic thought raise your hand just like you knew it before I told you Okay, so it's the year 5778, and that, and why do I say that? Because every, in the Hebrew, you know, you may, you may not understand, but in the Psalms, it's written with different cadences many times, and not, so many numbers of verses will say so many different things. And uh, so, anyway, but this is a year that you will possess the gates of your future. This is a tremendous year. I'm going to use this in text, Genesis 22, 17, and 18. Blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply. Now, what does that mean? This is a reiteration. Whenever the scripture says something twice, blessing, I will bless you. 
In other words, not just a normal blessing, not just a your daily needs blessing, but something beyond imagination. You see, if you don't have faith for God to do greater things, you're not going to see greater things. Are you understanding this? You know, if you want to live some dumb, boring life, you know, every day, you know, just wake up and it's just crisis after crisis, or you can make a decision. You can make a decision. This year is going to be different. If Satan sends a crisis in your life, bruise him to, on such a high level, smack him around, tell him he has no authority. He has no authority in your life. He has no authority in your family. He has no authority over you. Sickness cannot live in your family. Disease cannot live in your family. Poverty cannot live in your family. You make a decision that he's going to put an X on your door, and if his little demons try to go into that door, he's going to say to them, oh, no, little demons. I tried to go into that door in 2018, and I'm telling you, we got so bruised. We got so beaten up. We don't go in that household. We don't try to attack that household. That is off limits. Amen? Say off limits. Off limits. Off limits. Come on up there in the bleacher seats. Off limits. Off, off limits. limits. Amen. Amen. So blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply what your descendants as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you've obeyed my voice. In 1991, a book I wrote came out called Possessing the Gates of the Enemy on Prayer and Spiritual Warfare. It's in 30 languages, and I just rewrote it for the fourth time, and it's coming out this year. I believe it's very significant that a book that has started prayer probably in every country of the world, and I'm, and I'm not using a superlative for that, and many, many nations is coming out again because God is ready to do something new, something so remarkable. And so, you know, just take this verse as your own. We are the seed of Abraham. We've been grafted into the vine. What does that mean when it says in Romans that we've been grafted into the vine? It means that what was the blessings given to the children of God, uh, the Hebrew children, blessings of God for Abraham, it's now ours. The Bible says we'll be blessed coming in and blessed going out. We'll be blessed in the fruit of our body. We'll be blessed in the vine. We'll be blessed in the city. We will be the head and not the tail. The tail gets dragged around. The head puts the direction of the body. So aren't you tired of getting dragged around and beat up? Come on. We need to determine that we are the head and that we're going to be the head and that we're going to make this, Satan put that X on our door. Amen? Well, some of you have faith. Amen. Amen. So what do you do to possess these gates? Well, first of all, the Lord showed me that there are many gates that have been closed to you. There were gates of favor. Pastor just, just prophesied about a year of favor. It is favor. It takes favor to open gates. I mean, what happens is gates will be open to you that you didn't earn. Maybe you don't have as much knowledge as somebody else, but you have favor to open that gate. I think it's interesting. Mike bought me this, this lock and key for Christmas. And I, there's some gates I'm looking to open. There's some things I, that I could see. I was supposed to go through those gates, but they got shut to me. Maybe you, maybe you were supposed to get uh, a raise. Maybe you're supposed to get a promotion. Maybe there was a, a, a school you wanted to go into. Those gates that were closed to you, God wants to open those gates. So I want you to look back in your life and say, what has been closed to me? Isaiah 22, 22, I love this verse. If you know me very much, my son teases me. Sometimes on the 22nd of the verse, he texts me, Happy Shekinah Day, Mom. And, uh, you know, because he knows I love it so much. The key to the house of David I will lay on his shoulder so he shall open and no one shall shut, and she shall shut and no one shall open. Amen. So I want you to make a list of things that have been shut and decree they're coming open. You might say, well, I tried that before. Well, try it again. Because this is a year of possessing the gates of your future. 
This is a year of new things, of God doing new things. This is a year of prosperity. I mean, what do you say over yourself? Oh, no, bad things always happen to me. They always happen to me. Or do you say, this thing that Satan is trying to do to me is going to stop. You understand the difference? You're in the driver's seat. Biblically, you have been given promises of God. It's time you activate those promises. The Bible says the word did not profit them, not mixed with faith. What do you have faith to do? That's why I love this church. Our pastors pray, and they said, this is what God has said. We're going to fast and pray till it comes into place. You know, amen? Amen. So that's very important to understand. Uh, I, I love this also. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The, long, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Psalm 24, 7 through 10. So I want to say to you, this is a year of glory. This is a year, Habakkuk 2.14, it says, The earth shall be full with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Are you going to walk in the glory? Are you going to let Satan just beat you around? Some of you need to get mad. Some of you need to get mad. You need to put your foot down. You need to write a little note to the devil and put it on the bottom of your foot and tell him, you're going to read this. We assume he can read. It's time you get some attitude. Some of you, the devil's been running over you like a smooth road. So you can't get through your gate. You pull yourselves up by your, by your bootstraps, darling. You put on your big boy pants and you get up and you decide, the devil is not going to beat me around anymore. I am an overcomer. He's always caused me to triumph. I am a triumphant one. I am not meant to be dragged around. I am the head and not the tail. I will possess the gates of the enemy. I will go in and be victorious. You know, just get in your Bible and just slap all those promises around your house. You know, you go in my back door and there's scripture there. You go in my bathroom and there's scripture there. I'm telling you, I post it all over the place because I'm going to keep it before my eyes because the devil is trying every single day to defeat me. The devil is always trying to bring something up. Well, I want to tell you, make him pay. One day I was sitting in my kitchen. We used to live in Weatherford, Texas, and, and uh, a friend came in. I don't know if you heard me tell the story before, but I was sitting on the kitchen stool, and I had both hands like this, you know. And she goes, huh, you look terrible. I said, thank you. And uh, she said, you know, have you had a bad day? And I looked up, and something rose up inside of me. I said, you think I look bad? You ought to see the devil. I've been beating up on him all day. I remember one time when my son was three, Daniel, and uh, he fell out of bed and, and he split his head open and Mike had to work the next day. So I was driving Daniel to the, to the hospital and he looked up with me, those big brown three-year-old eyes. He said, Mama, don't let the devil hurt me anymore. Oh, this mama bear thing came up in me like, ooh. So, so they were stitching him up, you know, and I could hear him crying, and they wouldn't let me go in there. And I mean, you know, so I told the devil, devil, this is going to cost you 10,000 souls. And I'm telling you, I got him. I got him. And so I wanted to say, every time the devil tries to hurt you, just put his hand on the stove and heat it high. There's something that's got to change in you. Just the thing, possessing the gates of your future is active. You're understanding this? You know, you can only defeat, be defeated if you accept a defeatist attitude. You are called to possess the gates. So, number one, to do it, you need to prepare. You need to prepare. You need to say, okay, where am I not in alignment with God's promises? 
and surrender completely and absolutely to God. What about your giving? What are you doing in the, in the area of giving? You know, at the end of the year, Mike and I made sure that we had given everything we had promised. You know, we had promised over certain amounts and, and that we wanted to give to the building fund. And, you know, sometimes we just give extra just to make sure. Are you giving more every year? Are you looking to give less or are you looking to give more? It's all in your attitude. Are you understanding this? And if you're not giving anything, no wonder you're not receiving because the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you, not withhold. Oh, it got a little quiet. Okay, I'm moving along. Okay, all right, here we go. Number two, examine where our walk with God has deteriorated. Has life beat you up and you've declared detente? You know, so determine where that has happened. Number three, intimacy. Are you intimate with God? Revelation 3, 20 and 21. Behold, I stand at the door at the knock. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Now listen to this part. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame. So what's he saying? I am an overcomer. You're my kid. I want you to be an overcomer too. You know, I, I'm not going to teach on it today, but it's fascinating. The Bible says a lot about heavenly rewards. There is so much in the Bible about heavenly rewards. You know, heaven isn't a punishment. Heaven is a blessing. You know, I mean, I've been thinking, you know, I've had, I have had several family members go home to be with the Lord, you know. And so you start thinking about, did anybody lose somebody this year? Anybody have somebody pass away? Well, you know, you start thinking about heaven a little bit, don't you? You know what I mean? But it is a blessing. Okay, next, examine where Satan has determined to close your gates. That's number four. Has he hurt your family? The family gate is critical. Satan has tried to rob us on family levels in many, many ways. But this is a season God is going to restore. Can you believe for that? Maybe you went through a divorce and it caused great damage to your family. God can heal. Maybe there's somebody you haven't talked to in a long time. God can heal. Don't let it just stay that way. Are you understanding this? God will give you a plan. Has Satan tried to damage your reputation? Oh, I remember one time somebody decided I was a false prophet, and they started going, to, and they were pretty well known to all these ministries in the Dallas area, telling them I was a false prophet. And I was, you know, pretty upset about it, to put it mildly. And the Lord said to me, Cindy, look, if you're worried they can hurt your reputation, you have nothing because you can't hurt my reputation. So you got to determine, do you want your reputation or my reputation? Amen? So I just said, oh, your reputation. And you know what happened? God started vindicating me one after the other, after the other, after the other. If you, you know, take your marbles and go home and you have such, such, such small EQ, emotional quotient, that, you know, somebody says boo to you and you get offended and you're so rejected by what they said, you're never going to be visible in ministry because rejection might be your daily bread. The more visible you are, the more people don't like you, the more they want to take pot shots at you. But if you're doing God's work, it's him who will fight your battles. Whatever, whether you're teaching Sunday school or whether, you know, whatever you're trying to do, trying to live for Jesus in your business, whatever you're trying to do, you have to understand that you are God's child and he takes great exception when somebody messes with you. I take great exception when somebody hurts my kids and my grandkids, oh my goodness. Somebody hurts one. I have some of them here today. Lily, they're sitting there so gorgeous. You know, I mean, I tell you what, somebody messes with my grandchildren. I don't know. I have to say, give me Jesus because, you know, I really want to tear them apart. You know, I'm, I, I'm getting more sanctified in that area of my life every day. Okay. All right. This is a year of the double doors opening. Now, you may not understand that, but... Uh, Isaiah 45, 1 through 3, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I've held, to subdue nations before him, 
Loose the armor of kings to open before him the double doors so the gates will not be shut. I'm going to stop there. Okay, you understand that? Double doors. When any something is given double, it means double blessing, double finances. Can you believe that you're not meant to live in poverty? And every one of you should have said amen. Can you believe that you are not to live in credit card debt that strangles you? Amen? Listen, my daddy and our, my daddy was a church planner, but we lived on credit cards. And if he wanted to do something for the building, he just put that on the credit card, you know, because, you know, we had like two or three people in the church. But we started drowning. Uh, we were personally drowning because of this. And this is just the way people used to do when they pioneered churches. You know, we'd have to pray to eat. We never know where the food would come from. You know, I had one pair of shoes for school, one pair of shoes, you know, uh, for, for uh, you know, uh, a church, you know, one or two dresses, you know. We just didn't have much. But I want to tell you something. In our generation, Mike and I have learned a different way to live. We have learned how to trust. Like when we did the global summit here and we needed those 200000 that wasn't in our budget. We didn't know how we were going to do that. But God had given us a word. Is there not a word? And we raised every bit of that money. Amen? Are you understanding this? And we didn't know how we were going to raise that money. But you, God has given you the word of God. This Bible is full of promises that says that God wants to bless you. Why? How are we going to build these buildings? How are we going to do all this if we're not blessed? We're blessed to be a blessing. Amen? Amen? You know, do you, you know, I remember I used to go to a church. Mike and I went to a church called Fred Price. Any you heard of Fred Price? African-American pastor, and we were the token whites. <laughs> we were... <laughs> Don't look at me like that. We were the token whites. I mean, I, nobody had to wonder when I went to the nursery, you know, whose little girl that was because she's the only white baby in the nursery. And so anyway, but Fred used to say that when he grew up in a tough neighborhood that, you know, only the pimps had the nice cars, you know, and they'd drive around. Well, he said, now, I mean, his church raised money. This may sound outlandish, but bought him a brand new Rolls Royce. They all pitched in the whole church. And, you know, now he can put tithe on his license plate and drive it through those neighborhoods. You understand, he didn't buy that car. He didn't have to buy that car. I mean, sure, he could sell that car. But you know what? The Lord spoke something to me just this morning. I was praying over a situation, and I was thinking, well, if I do this, I don't have the money to do that, and I want to do what God wants first, so I'm going to do that. And the Lord spoke to me so clearly. He said, don't you think I have enough money for both? And I realized that was the spirit of poverty that was stinking thinking right in my brain that God is a God of lack that he can't bless me and bless somebody else. No, that's the way the world thinks. God is going to cause you to possess the gates of the enemy. The Bible has promised that you, we will have an abundant life. Amen? Well, I'm just going to preach it to you until I get a lot more amens than that. Some of you are going to believe me when I'm preaching this stuff to you. He's going to open the gates of blessing. Let me tell you a few things. You know, this Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders, some of you know about them, some of you don't, but it's, it's a group of prophets that I, cha that I chair. I mean, the Global Prophetic Summit that we had here, we had 86 nations that participated in that. We had prophets from 35 nations that came together right here where we were. It was the most remarkable thing. And they were giving and prophesying words and shifting nations. And, and it was remarkable what was happening. And I was thinking some of the words we prophesied. We prophesied the EU would fragment. And it happened. We prophesied that the U.S. economy would remain strong when many people were saying it was going to collapse. It, and I was in this building in January 2008, worshiping right over there, when God spoke to me, there'll be no more business as usual, and that he was going to shake the economy, and it happened. In fact, we had already planned to go to Wall Street to pray before the 2008 shaking, this September that happened. So God doesn't do anything except he tells the prophets first. That's what, do you believe the Bible? Oh, wait, what, you guys believe the Bible up there? What, you believe over here? 
Way up there, way, way, way up there. Okay, so anyway, but God has said that he's going to do many things. So when the, the Lord says, I'm going to bless, he's going to bless. There's going to be more shifting and uncovering of sexual misconduct. We prophesied that would happen. It's going to happen more and more and more. Why? Because the fear of the Lord is going to fall upon this nation. And many people are going to be healed. Many people are going to be healed of pornography problems this coming year. With the death of Hugh Hefner, there have been, re there have been many revelations of sexual uh, misconducts, and we believe that he was a strong man. And when the strong man went, then everything else is getting exposed. Transfer of wealth. There already has been a transfer of wealth. It's going to happen on greater levels than we can imagine. Ask the Lord to give you ideas on how to tap into that. You know, I was talking to some different ones here recently. There's a friend of mine. She's an uh, Ethiopian. She might be watching. I don't know. But uh, she's been my prayer partner for years. And, and uh, uh, I was talking to her, and she said, Cindy, I realized that we were always lacking that I needed to ask God for new ideas because they're pioneering the Ethiopian work here in Dallas. And she said, the Lord showed me something that I could believe for. And he said, there's a person in our church, they own big rig, you know, the, the front parts of it, I don't know what you call it, not the back end, but the front end. Anyway, and uh, so the Lord showed uh, them that they should buy one of those. So two ladies went in and bought one of those. And their friend is running it for it, and they get a cut every time it goes in and out, and they're not doing anything. Are you understanding this? Passive income. Can God do that for you? Turn to your neighbor and say, God's going to do that for me. So I thought if God can do it for her, what about me? Come on, look to your neighbor and say, what about me? Tell them it might as well be me. Might as well be us. Oh, we can build lots of buildings if we get lots of money, can't we? Amen. We can do it. You and the nations can do that too. We know that this was the 500th year since the Reformation, October 31st. We were in Wittenberg, Germany, where Martin Luther tacked the thesis to the door, decreeing that, and God opened a door. A television crew came up to me. I didn't know it was the biggest news service in all Germany. And they said, can we interview you while you were here? And I just preached the gospel, and they put the whole thing on nightly news all over Germany. Amen. Open a door that no man can shut. That was a door of favor. I tell you what, I have so many doors of favor. We were, we were dealing something big in media, and the Lord just blessed me. I mean, somebody, you know, had hurt his hand, and I, and, and, I, and I was able to pray for him, and God completely healed him. I didn't feel any anointing. I didn't feel any rush of power. I didn't feel anything. But God did something great, amen? So God, just, just pray for him. Even if you don't, you don't know that you have enough faith to do that, just do it because the Bible says if you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. And God will open doors for you. Amen? Amen? That's a way that God opens doors. So you will be reformer. The body of Christ cannot get apathetic or there could be a counter-reformation. And we're starting to get biblical values into the nation, but there could be a counter-reformation. So we need to mentor the millennials. If we don't mentor the millennials, you know what's going to happen? It's going to go all the way back to the way it used to be. We cannot forget the millennials. And don't be critical of them. You know, it's so easy to get critical. We don't need to be critical. We need to bless the millennials. We need to, you know, not, they don't judge me, you know, they say. And so God is getting ready to make radical changes in the world. I want to tell you something God showed me. There's going to be such a change the way we do banking. Banking is going to completely change. Currencies are going to completely change. And we're going to have radical, radical changes. And if you listen, God's going to show you how to invest. That will be a great blessing. Bankings are going to go to, to new shifts. But there will be Ponzi schemes that comes along in the middle where you put money in on the front end, but then you lose on the end. So the Lord said, beware of that and have great discernment. Rapid accelerations of knowledge. God is going to give you new knowledge. You're going to start, even from being in this service today, 
You're going to go to a new level, a level you've never been to before. There's going to be accelerations, accelerations, and suddenly, suddenly. Sometimes you're believing for a thing, and it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, and then suddenly there it is right before you. Suddenly you have the healing in your family. Suddenly you got that job offer. Suddenly you find a house that you know you can get into. You've got to believe God for the suddenlies. In the meantime, just keep steady. Keep steady. Keep being faithful. Keep giving. Keep doing what God tells you to do. Because I tell you, there will be a day and there will come a time when all of a sudden your family's restored. And many times it happens when you're not looking for it anymore. You're just doing what God has called you to do. And bang, it happens. And God does it in such unusual ways. The Lord said to me, you're not even going to be able to figure out how ingenious what I'm going to do for your life. How I'm going to fix that business problem or fix that problem in your family or fix that problem at your job. It's going to be so suddenly and so ingenious, God is going to move them out. I remember one time Mike was working for American Airlines, and there's this guy that came in and started persecuting him. He was the financial comptroller for American Airlines, and they were just this guy. I mean, he took all his employees away. He ended up, you know, sitting at a desk. He had no work to do day after day after day. It was just very, very difficult, but in the end, that guy was fired completely, and Mike got a promotion because we kept decreeing. We kept believing that he was ahead and not the tail. We kept believing that he was going to have justice, that if somebody touches him, they touch the apple of the Lord's eyes. Are you understanding this? I'm using the gift of exhortation that prophets have to tell you this. The enemies you see today, you will not see tomorrow. And it happened that fast for Mike. Oh, I got to wrap this up. There's awakenings of God on worldwide scales. God told the prophets that very clearly that there is going to be something happen in North Korea that will be so miraculous that right now God is hardening Kim Jong-un's uh, a uh, heart just like Pharaoh because he's going to pull him down. And God has a solution. And there will be a day come when that's going to fall. In fact, the Lord told us evil dictators at the global summit we had here in November, evil dictators are starting to fall. Think what's happening in Iran right now. Maduro in Venezuela, he is out. God is going to shift him out. Mugabe is out in Zimbabwe. I'm telling you what, God is getting ready to shake everything that can be shaken. But you need to be the one who disturbs Satan's kingdom. You need to be the one that rises up and say, I am putting a line in the sand. I am taking away everything you have stolen from me. From this day, this is mine. This isn't yours. You can't have my children. You can't have my mother. You can't have my family. This is a cancer-free zone and Satan is trying to bring cancer into this house. So Father, in the name of Jesus, you told me there was going to be cancer research breakthroughs, such breakthroughs in cancer. And Father, right now I, I bind the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of infirmity in people's bodies. I command the sickness to leave your body. I say be healed in the name of Jesus. I speak arthritis to go. I speak the cancer to go. I speak faith to rise up. I say in the name of Jesus, his name is greater than cancer. His name is greater than any other name. I want to tell you, I want to tell you something. I lost a sister to cancer. Uh, my, my lovely little sister. And I prayed and prayed. And you know what God said to me? Every prayer you prayed, I stored in the bowls of heaven. And there's going to be a day when that cure for cancer comes. And because you pray, I'm going to tip that bowl. And those prayers are going to come down. And many, 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 many people will not have to suffer cancer and suffer the grief and suffer what you went through because I am greater. So just receive your healing. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Thank you, Lord. If you don't have to leave, just hang in just a few minutes more. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think what Satan has stolen from you. I want you to think about what's happened to you in 2017, the grief you've gone through, the suffering you've gone through. 
We had real challenges this last year, real challenges. We had some things personally in our family, real challenges. But I want to tell you, I'm here to say I've drawn a line in the sand around my family. And I want to say the greater is he who's in us than he who's in the world. Today, Janina, greater. Daniel, greater is he than he who's in the world. So, Father, I just thank you for faith. I thank you for faith. Come on, just receive it. Take off the garments of depression and defeat. You're not defeated. Those listening on the web, you're not defeated. God is going to give you a year of such faith. Don't let the devil take your faith. Don't let him take your confidence in God because he's going to win if he has your confidence. Don't cast away your confidence. The Bible says it has great reward. If you don't cast away your confidence, you will have great reward. Again, a superlative. Again, a superlative. In the name of Jesus. Just would you close your eyes one moment? Just, just a moment. If you'd say to me today, Miss Cindy, I don't know where I'll go if I die. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going to happen to me. Or maybe one time you prayed to receive Jesus, but you're not sure it worked. I, I want to see your hands. I want to pray for you. Please raise your hand. Miss Cindy, pray for me. I see that hand, sir. Who else? Come on. I see those hands. I see those hands. Come on. Raise your hands. I see those hands. Come on. More. More. I want you just to pray with me right now. Let's all pray together. Can we say, dear God, I invite Jesus into my heart and life. Be my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I want to be your child, God. In Jesus' name. When you prayed that prayer, Jesus came. Amen. Let's clap our hands and thank God for what he's done today. Pastor Jim. Hallelujah. Go possess.